Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Benjamin Postuma, Head of Product at DXC. Benjamin, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk here. Yeah, uh, we have, of course, covered DXC earlier, but since you are here, I would love to hear from you. What is the company all about? What do you folks do? Yeah, absolutely. So the main thing that we do from a commercial products perspective mm-hmm. is we deliver end-to-end solutions for private 5G networks specifically focused on enterprise. Um, so what that means is all the way from um, the core to the radio access network and then tying that together with our mesh network, a proprietary mesh network system to be able to wirelessly connect the various brand nodes, we can provide very, very um, fast, scalable, and very, very flexible deployments across a number of different enterprises. When we talk about 5G, it could be interpreted depending on who you're talking. Most of the time, people just think of it as an icon on your iPhones. Hey, 5G network. But in reality, it is doing much more than that. If I'm not wrong, two or three years ago, the U.S. government also released some more spectrum to further kind of democratize the 5G space. Also, earlier, you have to pay millions of dollars to get. Now, it's very, very democratized. People can, you know, very easily create their uh, 5G networks. So I want to hear from you. What is the difference there? And also, if you can also talk about is 5G evolution of 4G or this is more or less like, you know, uh, what we have with Wi-Fi private network, it's evolution there. So if that question makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, There's a number of different ways to approach a private cellular network. And, And I'll talk in a second about where we're going with this. But to address the spectrum allocations, that's that's been a key driver in what's enabled a lot of companies, um, ourselves included, to really come up and start delivering solutions built in that space. So in the United States, you have the CBRS spectrum, um, which, as you said, is available and um, open for a lot of different uses. Um, we are leveraging that space to provide access to our enterprises. You see also this is happening across the world. There's a lot of work in Europe being done um, in similar type things. Um, there's also work being done to take spectrum that's been given or, or purchased, owned by carriers and allowed to be used um, for private wireless um, in enterprise situations. Um, so there's a lot of things opening up. There's a really exciting movement that's happening. Um, it's gonna enable a lot of growth in this space. Now, now to address kind of where private 5G is and how that's actually developing, you're right. It is a very, very different use case than you know, what you see on your phone and, and you know, maybe for a consumer that means faster connections or faster download speed or more access to content. But when we look at that in an enterprise case, we're really looking at a lot of the other major tenants of 5G, which is the ability to slice the network in a way to provide different priorities to different applications and tools. And that is pretty significant from a automation and manufacturing perspective, uh, which is one of our key verticals. We can take this and we can assign various devices and various machines on a factory floor to have different priorities on the network so that there's assured connectivity to everything. We're also looking at from a private network perspective, because the network is is wholly contained and owned within an enterprise, we can now really have full control over the amount of latency that's on the network, um, the amount of quality of service, the throughput, the types of devices that are connected. And now instead of an enterprise owner, you know, taking a carrier network or even taking Wi-Fi, which is, you know, less strongly managed than a 5G network, they can take our 5G capability and really tailor that and orchestrate that specifically to the needs of their organization. And since we're talking about cellular and Wi-Fi, depending on once again, who you talk to, there is also confusion, hey, you know, this is the next step of Wi-Fi or this is the next step of cellular. But I think if I'm not wrong, it's going to be all three. There will be Wi-Fi, there will be cellular, and there will be, you know, 5G private network as well. So they will complement each other. And as you said, I mean, Wi-Fi, the current Wi-Fi, it has a lot of limitations. It's, so uh, 5G private network, they kind of bridge a lot of gap there. So can you also talk about uh, the role there? And also, uh, since you folks also work closely with a lot of users and customers, what kind of uh, uh, use cases or things that 5G private network allows companies, enterprises to do, which they could not do with traditional cellular and Wi-Fi? Yeah, that, that's that's a, a big one. Um, first of all, we do tend to fully operate in an adjacent space um, or, or even fully coexist with other technologies. This is not intended, you know, our solutions certainly, and a number of the other private wireless solutions out there are never intended to go and replace something like Wi-Fi. 
Wi-Fi is, is fairly ubiquitous in the amount of devices you can connect to it. And there is some really strong use cases for Wi-Fi, specifically when you talk about, you know, connecting the office space, connecting laptops and, and phones and things of that nature for people who want to do their work on them. Where we bring that up a step further is when we want to talk about scaling up to connecting, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands of different devices. And we're talking about, you know, possibly machine to machine type connections. So robots, sensors, et cetera, um, to a network, Wi-Fi simply can't scale to handle that type of demand, nor can you give individual devices the type of priority on the network they need. One of the big differences between Wi-Fi and cellular is that where a cellular is scheduled access, you know, Wi-Fi is basically a listen before talk platform that's looking for opportunities to transmit. That works fine when you're on your laptop or when you're doing you know, streaming video calls or anything like that. But when you have robots and sensors and devices that absolutely need to connect all the time, you have to have something that's more scheduled. You have to have something that's more reliable. So that's one of the big differences that we can, we can use something like private 5G for. Um, the other sense is the built-in security that comes um, with the authentication practice of 5G. Um, by using you know, eSIMs and programmable embedded SIMs, we can assure the right types of access um, with, with a very high level of security. Now, where we're going with that and where our use cases are, again, it goes back to connecting you know, many, many, many different types of machines specifically to the network to allow a network operator, um, in this sense, it's the enterprise owner, to be able to manage all these devices, to be able to orchestrate which ones get connectivity when, what priorities they have, what types of content they're getting, and also because it's a private network, and this is important, all the data that's collected, stored, and actioned on within the enterprise is all local. We have a, a local you know, physical core presence in the enterprise. And so as you're collecting data and as you're using data, all that's right there effectively at the edge of the network. So now we can enable ultra low latency applications because we're not going back to you know, some content in the cloud or some content elsewhere on the internet. We're going local and we can have very, very high performing applications with high data reliability. It also brings the point of uh, whenever I talk to a lot of technologists, they crave for the old days of Internet 1.0 when they were running their own mail servers. They were, everything was on their own infrastructure. As you pointed out, they don't have to go to the cloud for every single thing. In some cases, you don't want to go uh, irrespective of how cheap actually even the cloud prices pile up in respect. So can you once again uh, talk about uh, some of uh, these kind of usage, use cases, which could also be about either security. I mean, you can see with the, the war going on in Europe, it has, cyber security is also a big issue. It could be data ownership, sovereignty can be a big issue in some cases. So uh, what role can a uh, private private network play there uh, to bring that experience back to companies who want to own and manage their own uh, uh, instances? Yeah, and I think I think you said some really interesting keywords there, and that is companies who want to own this. And you know, with Internet 1.0 and in the, in the beginnings of this, before cloud compute was a thing, you were basically forced into this this system of all of your data was was stored locally and kept locally. And and we we migrated everything to the cloud, and that works really well because of just the the vast amount of resources and the ability to you know compute at a high level to be able to have access to all the information at a relatively high level. But now we're coming back to, we do need some things at the edge, whether it's for, like you said, data sovereignty is, is a massive thing. We've talked to some manufacturers who, based on their policy, um, because of competition and other things in their spaces, they can't put anything on the cloud. They have to have everything local to secure their proprietary information. Um, that's just one reason. The, the other thing is, of course, performance. But what we've done, you do still there are a lot of cases where you're still going to want some level cloud access. And so what we've delivered is a, a very, you know, edge hybrid cloud compute platform, which we can synchronize from the edge appliance, which is the, the services, the, the processors, the resources on the edge of the network in the enterprise. We can synchronize that with a cloud, whether it's a private cloud or a hyperscaler cloud or something of that nature. And we can do all the data synchronization back and forth. So we're not isolating people from the clouds. What we're doing is we're, we're bringing it very, very close to them. So when things are needed to be local, again, whether it's for, for data security or for access or for performance, we will do that. And we have processes that understand when and how that happens. And then for other situations, we can 
you know, go request data from the cloud or, or push the edge data back up to the cloud and do synchronization when it makes sense for the enterprise. So we, we give a level of control that really is just starting to emerge with a lot of the different, you know, edge concepts. Um, and so we're leveraging that pretty strongly. Right. And I think this takes us back to the the multi-cloud or multi-environment, whatever word you want to, it, it's never going to be our case, cloud or private. It's always going to be and, just the way we talked about Wi-Fi and. Now, uh, let's also quickly talk about company once again. Uh, what's going on at new at the company? Because, you know, as you see, the whole landscape is evolving, changing. Anything that new that you folks are working on? Yeah, absolutely. So, we have been around for, for some time and we've been doing a lot of research and development um, specifically focused on our mesh architecture. Um, this is a, a thing that sets us apart from a lot of our competition in this space and a lot of other people working in this space. And what that does is that effectively allows us to be able to connect together multiple different RAN nodes using the same CBRS spectrum as you would for the access network. We're using that for the backhaul network between the mesh nodes where typically you would have to run fiber or ethernet or something else to connect your individual radio access network, your E node Bs, your G node Bs, your RUs, whatever they are, back to your core services over a physical medium. What we're doing is because we can deliver these all with an, uh, a built-in mesh capability effectively, we can now connect all those devices together wirelessly using the topology of a mesh network. They're, they're self-forming, they're self-healing, um, they're self-optimizing, and we can deliver a network very, very quickly. So the last few years has been an R&D of that technology. We now have that to a place and we've tied that together with the rest of an end-to-end -end network. And we're delivering our first core product, um, our core commercial product set um, in June of this year. The product is going to be called GXC Onyx. And what that gives you is that gives you a full virtualized network management platform to control the network. We provide a built-in core network, we provide the radio access nodes, and we provide the mesh network, and everything you need in between, all controlled by a single pane of glass portal to run and control the network. So we're truly developing an end-to-end -end solution that enterprise owners can take and they can plug into their enterprise and be up and running fairly quickly. And because we have the cloud platform, our next steps are building onto that and really moving up into the application space and starting to look at how we can deliver, whether it's you know network optimization or edge compute platforms, or even um, user-facing applications, all built in as a native part of this full end-to-end -end network. So once again, it's GXC Onyx. It's coming out in June. Uh, we're very excited to finally be launching our first commercial product and, and really become a player in this space. Who is going to be the target audience for this uh, GXC Onyx? Right now, the target audiences are, are a lot of the different players you see within the Industry 4.0 use cases. So we're targeting industrial manufacturing, um, so factories of the future, smart factories, people who want to go through this process of digital transformation and really take their, their manufacturing processes from a you know where it was, accelerating into Industry 4.0 and in building up that automation, building up that connectivity across the enterprise. Uh, we're also looking at things like smart warehousing, connected agriculture, um, connecting up campuses and universities, and a number of other places where you have a lot of different places to connect, whether it's indoor and outdoor. Um, that's because of our mesh network. That's where we really specialize is these multiple buildings, large scale, providing end-to-end -end mobility across from inside of one building, outside, back into another building, and across the entire facility. Can you also talk about uh, the importance of partnerships, you know, for you folks? Uh, to deliver, you know, some of these, you know, either services or products, depending on how you look at them. Uh, what is the importance of the partnership? And do you have existing partnership or you're planning to partner with someone? Yeah, th that's a really great question. Um, we, there have been a lot, there's been a lot of development, you know, within, obviously within LTE and 5G um, from radio hardware to software pieces, um, to different ways of orchestrating the network. So there's a lot of really, really great companies doing some interesting things in that space. And so we are doing partnerships at that level um, because we don't, we don't see the need to recreate everything. We have our individual you know, core competencies um, and we're taking those and we're building on it. We're augmenting that with partnerships. So we have partnerships all the way through embedded within the network to provide you know, higher levels of optimization, to provide higher um, fidelity of radio hardware, things of that nature. We're also not looking to manage the network locally 
Because we want to give the control and the management of this over to an enterprise, um, we do recognize that some enterprises will be able to run it themselves. Um, it is designed to be very, very user friendly, um, but some enterprises won't want to do that. And so we're aligning with partnerships to act as the managed service provider to run and orchestrate the network for them. Now we will always maintain you know, some level of oversight and control over the network as, as the developer of the platform. Um, but from a day-to-day -day operation and to be able to hit the scale that we're looking for, we're looking at bringing in some strong partnerships, both on the integration and installation side, and then as the network is up and running on the managed service provider side. And then, and then as we build this up, application partnerships and, and everything else as we're going on, again, we're not trying to build a fully vertical, vertically integrated ecosystem. We want to bring in the best of the best uh, and really make a, a, a very, very strong offering. Now, as you're talking earlier, that 5G, you know, private network is kind of relatively emerging new space, which also means we have to do a lot of education. We have to do a lot of advocacy as well. Are you folks doing, making any efforts in that space as well? Yeah, so we, we have been doing quite a bit of um, trying to educate the rest of the space on this because you're right, it is a very new and emerging concept. A lot of different groups are talking about it. You know, it seems every few days we hear about another industry player coming in and offering the solution. So what we've tried to do is, is look to build a forum and, and educate whether it's, you know, eventual customers or partners or anybody else who is interested in the space, educate them more about what's happening in this area. We have launched a podcast called GXC Meshup that is available on um, all the Pod, uh, podcast streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera. Um, and the, really all that does is that is just a forum for industry experts and leaders to get together and talk about the various use cases, the various vertical markets. We can talk about case studies. We can talk about things that we're seeing across the industry and where the trends are going and just have an open place to talk about where this is all emerging and developing. But most importantly, why are we doing this? Who are we doing it for? And what use cases are we seeing emerge out of this? We're also relaunching our website. It's going to be launched at gxc.io in the next several weeks um, by the end of April. And we're gonna have a lot of content on there which talks about, you know, we're, gonna have, we're publishing white papers that talk about, again, at a high level, what different technologies can mean for different enterprises. So we understand, you know, private 5G is great, but within that, there's a lot of different things that we can look at, whether it's network slicing, edge compute, network security, mesh RAN nodes, all these things, we can talk about why they're important and, and why they matter to different industries. Also, what plans do you have for this in terms of, you know, there are also a lot of events going on in terms of, so which which are the ones you will be attending or pres be present there so folks can check out what you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. The next um, few events that we're doing at the end of April, on April 26th and 27th, we will be at the um, Enterprise 5G East show in Atlanta. Um, we are a sponsor for that show, and so we will be doing some panels, and we'll have a booth there. So if you're in Atlanta at the end of April, stop by. We'll have our radio hardware up and running. We'll, we'll have demonstrations of our network. Um, we'll be able to show everything that we're working on with GXC Onyx. Um, and the next one after that is the big 5G show at the in the middle of May, um, which is going to be in Austin. And it'll be a very similar thing. We'll, we'll be doing talks and discussions, and we'll have a booth space set up so you can stop by and talk to us and see what we're all about and, and kind of get your hands on some of the hardware and take a tour of the platform. And we'd be happy to show anybody who wants to see it. Ben, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about uh, The most important thing was to just explain the whole difference between 5G, Wi-Fi, cellular, and the role that it's playing. Uh, a lot of use cases that are now possible because of that. And also the new products that you folks are working on. Thanks for those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It was a great conversation and hopefully to have more.